in this video, I'm going to be introducing you to the basics of matrices. So where they come from, uh, how to find the dimensions of a given matrix, how to calculate a transpose of a matrix, and a few basic things like that. So I'll be timestamping each part of the video below, so you can just skip through to whichever part you want to see. Uh, if it is useful, please do like and subscribe. So let's get some idea as to where this idea of matrices might come from. So you can see here we have a network. Uh, and this network has three towns on it, or three cities, A, B, and C. And between them, you can see there are these roads connecting them. So you can see to get from A to B, there are two roads connecting us. Well, this first represent this information in a table. So we could have town A, B, and C, and again, town A, B, and C here. Well, this first entry here is saying, well, how many ways are there to go from town A and arrive back to town A? Well, zero, there are no roads connecting town A to itself. What about from A to B? Well, we know that's two. And finally, what about A to C? Well, there's just one road connecting us. Let's now do the second row. So how many roads are there connecting town B to A? Well, we know that's two. B back to itself is zero, and B to C is just one. And finally, how many roads are there connecting C to A? Well, that's one. C to B, that's also one. And finally, you can see, look, there's this curly road here that leaves town C and arrives back to it. So there's one road connecting town C to itself. Now, we've represented this information in a nice table, but we could actually represent it in a matrix. And it would look like this. We use uh, brackets to describe matrices, and it's going to look like this with these brackets. It's going to have entries 0, 2, 1, 2, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1. And this matrix here is going to represent the number of connections between these three towns or cities. Now, this is quite a basic use for matrices, but there are many more. And we're going to look at some of them, such as solving systems of linear equations, um, transformations of shapes. And you, if you go on to study more maths, you can look at how we can solve you know, differential equations using them and many more things. So we also want to be able to you know, describe these matrices. And so here's an example of a matrix. You can see this is our matrix A. We usually use a capital letter to describe our matrices. And we can talk about the dimension of a matrix, which is just how many rows and columns it has. And when we do this, we usually use the letter M okay, to represent the number of rows and the letter N to represent the number of columns. So we say we have an M by N matrix. So this matrix here, you can see, it has two rows, so M is going to be equal to two. And it's going to have three columns, okay? So our letter N is going to be equal to three. So this is a two by three matrix, okay? The matrix A is two by three. Now, the numbers inside the matrix, you can see these numbers here, these are called the elements of our matrix. Now, they don't always have to be numbers. They could be functions. They could be expressions. You know, they could be anything we like, but in this case, we're using numbers. Now we can actually describe a specific element in the matrix. So say we want to describe this two here. Well, the matrix is capital A, so I'm going to call the elements lowercase a. And this is in the first row and the first column. So I'm going to use first row, first column. So this element here is two. Let's now describe a second one. Let's describe, say, this one down here, this eight. Well, to describe that, well, which row is it in? It's in my second row and which column? Well, it's in the third column. So there we go, we've described the element eight, okay? Now, if our number of rows is equal to our number of columns, as you can see in this example here, we say we have a square matrix. So a matrix is square if N is equal to N, okay? And square matrices have some special properties. For example, we could find possibly the inverse of them. We could calculate the determinant of them, and we'll look at all these ideas a bit later on. We can also to perform a calculation on a matrix, okay? And, and one of these trans, um, calculations is called finding the transpose of a matrix. And so all a transpose of a matrix is, it's just flipping the rows for the columns, okay? So here we have a matrix M. Well, let's find the transpose of M, M transpose. And we use this T to represent that. Well, the columns of M transpose, okay? So the columns like this, well, they're just gonna be the rows of our matrix M. So the first column is going to be two, three, four. And my second column is going to be four, six, eight, like this. And you can see we've now calculated M transpose. If we have a matrix like this where all of the elements are zeros, we call this a null matrix or the zero matrix, okay? So this is quite a simple idea. And finally, if we have a square matrix, 
where the leading diagonal, so by leading diagonal I mean this one here, if the leading diagonal is all ones and every other element is a zero, we say we have the identity matrix and we can describe that with a capital I. And we're going to look at uses for these things a bit later on, but this is just a brief introduction. So hopefully it was useful. If it was, like and subscribe. And I'm going to link the rest of my videos on matrices in the description so you can check them out and go over to my channel for tons more maths tutorials. Thanks for watching.